Maria Caldi crossbows. This is a re-edit on a video I did the other day. I split into two parts because people complained it was too long. So i um, done my best to bring to you the most in-depth review I could of the name V2 Mark II Stinger crossbow. Um, so this is part one and part two is to follow. Thanks and bye bye. Morning guys, Mark here, Cali Crossbows, on his lovely 4am sunny morning in South Wales. It's pitch black outside, um, we've had thunder, we've had lightning, uh, torrential rain, and there's quite literally a river running down the road outside. So we're going to look at the new Series 2 Mark II Steamboat Stinger Tactical. Why is she Mark II? So you eagle eyed or a noticed on this new chassis. The cutout for the your bowstring, in, in what effectively is the breech, is now a smaller notch. The edges have been chamfered to give a crisper, cleaner release. The QR system is now a standard fitment. So this is the new base model for the Simo Stinger Tactical. To compete with competition as well, she now comes with the tuning trigger. So is a whole host and raft of modifications on the Mark II Steamboat Stinger to the Mark I. Uh, released on November the 1st, 2023, so just a few days ago, I got the latest and the greatest of all the modern crossbows, in my opinion. She got the Metal Magazine, and you're showing the, the breech now. As you can see here, she now has this lovely chamfered um, breech area, um, bowstring retainer, quote whatever the hell you like, um, it's now got a, a 15 degree angle running off it and um, from the front as well from the side it's now got a slight convex as well, sorry concave, so the sing string sits more definitely in the groove but less friction on the string when you release. So when you pull up, it's pressure, 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 twang, gone. So it's a much improved trigger release system um, going out to the, the tuning trigger as a standard fitment. Okay, the next step we're gonna look at now is the riser. We now want the, the V3 riser on the Steamboat Stinger. The V1 being the EK Archery based Stinger 1. The V2 or S2 being the introduction model of the Stinger 2. This model, if you like, is the V3. And what they've done is as well, which is a nice upgrade as well. If you look here at the front, get the probe past the probe past the camera. Is now a straight flush. You can't see it that passing away. Come on the other side. It's now a straight flush to the rail. If I open up my magazine and show you inside now once she closes you can see now she's a smooth straight through finish so again full rail and when it closes it is now a perfect flush now if you go on the steamboat website it shows two uh, risers for your prod this is the standard uh, Mark 1 riser, so to speak. Just taking my limb out. And this is the special edition riser. If you've got the special edition Steamboat Stinger, which comes with serial numbered, 
This is the riser that you need. If we look on the top here, you will see it's like a small ramp system here running down the side. If your Steamboat Stinger has a cutout in the front on the metal magazine, you will need this improved, uh, it's not improved actually, um, it's a variation on the design. I'll say that, it's not improvement, it's a variation on the design. Let me show you how it fits now. When it fits into your rail, sits in there, the margin's got the limb in place. When you close the magazine, it will not close. That's because on either side of the riser block, or QR block, is those two little ramps. They and they, try to get better to the camera, there they are, there and they, that sits either side of the rail. So when you close it, it won't close. On the limited edition magazine, you come around the other way. On the limited edition magazine, this year was slightly raised, so it would close. If you do happen to have these um, limited edition riser blocks, like I do, it's not the end of the world. You can still take your Dremel and quietly, or hacksaw, and this little ramp here, you can see better on this reflection here, just quietly grind a, a two millimeters off either side and it'll work absolutely fine. So don't be alarmed, don't get upset, don't burst into tears. If you do happen to have, happen to order the, um, the QR mount for the Steamboat Stinger 2 Metal Magazine Limited Edition, these are the ones you need. If you've ordered, for, if you're a new standard edition, um, you need the new riser limb. As you can see now, these are square, flush, straight off. So I bring them up side by side, as you can see the difference. So coming in close there. Do do do. So I take them both on camera together. So yeah, you can see the difference in the face. Slight difference in the face and a slight difference in the profile. Okay, so that's the new upgraded limbs taken care of. We've had a look at the the new a standard um, tuning trigger. Uh, this is um, obviously now the new standard, um, so when you order your Steamboat Stinger 2 now, the Mark 2 Series 2, make sure you're ordering the Series 2, or Series 2 Mark 2 I should say. The Series 1, uh, Series 2 Mark 1, the release Stinger 2 is still available, but that's got the closing riser, the old fashioned style breech block. Uh, breach area it'll still come with this with a single pull fixed blade trigger um and it'll still come with a plastic magazine okay and now we gotta look at the metal magazine okay then guys so the first thing we're going to be attacking is the front laser and um, like it or loathe it purse myself i think is a lovely little thing um works great i like it it frees up you one of your Picatinny rails. It gives you better position of the handle, so you're not tight, tight up on your space down by there. And it is um, adjustable in two planes. It is an ambidextrous switch. You either fit your switch so it's a thumb release on the right, finger off down, or you can flip the laser over and do it reverse. So if you're a south pole, you can still use the laser the other way. But one thing I don't like with it is to change the batteries. Batteries run flat is a fact of life. To change the batteries, um, you have to slacken off your uh, Picatinny rail on the near side, slacken off your bolts at the back um, to take the battery out. When you take the battery out then, and change the battery, um, to, you put it back in, um, 
you have to reset your zero again, which means you're wasting battery energy resetting your zero. Um, so I think it'd be better if we had a plug-in permanently fixed battery, so you can plug a USB adapter into the back of the laser to charge it. I think it makes it a much easier, much simpler design. Um, Gerard, if you're listening, or Gerald, if you're listening, if this was re replaced with a USB rechargeable laser, because we've got uh, the one fitment on one side, you could have the port going to plug it to charge it, and a simple on and off switch on the other side. And you don't have, well, have to then reset your laser and re-zero every time you change your batteries or take the magazine apart and lose your zero. Look at tinny mounts. We've got four of them and uh, three on the magazine, one on the chassis. The three on the magazine are all metal mounts. They're not plastic, they can't be chewed up. They're good, they're solid. Um, you can have a really good grind on them you're not going to break them and because they are, are bolted on as well to the magazine they're not a cast as part of it if they you do damage them you do cross thread them you can replace them and they are available so that's a, a thumbs up from me as a great option um when you fit in your metal magazine you must install these black washers you otherwise when you're cocking the limbs will dig into the body and gouge it all the way up give me an unsightly mark okay so so we've looked at the front end we've looked at the laser now we've got to look at the sights and uh, we've got to come from this side because you won't be able to see from the other side it's cute very cute little fiber optic front sight here now with a horizontal adjustment just in view you can now adjust your front sight left and right which is great compared to the old sight, um, which was just a, a fixed post at the rear and fixed post at the front. So at least now you have got lateral adjustment in the horizontal plane to give you a better accuracy out of the box without having to sight in your laser straight away, without having to sight in the scope straight away. If your batteries fail, you still have a backup system on the crossbow to make your life easier is a thumb release for the magazine and this is a really sweet improvement over the plastic magazine. The plastic magazine, you got a nail release at the back, you pull it back and it pops the magazine. It also doubles as your rear sight on the Steamboat magazine. With this now, you have a, a replica a rim fire style release. Just press the button down to, to the bump stop here, which replicates, like I said, a hammer on the back or a double hammer. You can also use this double as a lanyard as well. So if you've got a QR lanyard system, uh, stock, uh, sorry, shoulder sling, you can put your QR sling now through here and hold it around your neck. So it's there ready to go. So you can have your shoulder sling on through the back here through using a QR release for your, for your sling and have it sat on your shoulder ready to go. So as soon as you crook, you're up, you can fire. So your hands are free. So if you think you're walking, you might fall, you might stumble. Um, you can release your crossbow. It's going to sit around your neck and you can fall and put your hands out, save yourself and save your weapon. If you're walking around with it and your instinct is to keep a hold of your weapon, you're going to face plant to the ground and the next thing you know, you're going to be spitting out teeth. Okay, we're going to look at this. I'm going to have a look at the sight picture now to give you my honest opinion. Um, shot field target for decades. Um, used to be ranked in the top 100 UK. Um, so we have a look now. I have a look now to see what my thoughts are on the sight picture. Well, first of all, bring the stock out because I don't like a short stock. Okay, now with this stock and the cheek at this level, my eye relief is perfect. The the comfort for me sits right in my crook of my shoulder. And I got two pointing options. You can either use the base of the blade for long range. So we've got this little notch for you. You can line up your top rear posts. Um, so I'll give you a, a long range because you're bringing your front end up. And your post is, is slightly proud at the front. I'd probably say has a, a, a 30 yard range mark. We shall see this on the fine range when I take it outside. 
and the bottom bead if you bring it down the middle is a notch bring it here see if you can see it here down in the centre of the notch and that sits exactly flush with the base plate of that so I would say I'll give you an intermediate range zero and of course then if you want to bring your bead all the way down into your notch um, so I'll give you another point of aim so you've effectively you've got three points of aim in your um, trajectory on the sighting system excellent love it and they are alloy they are solid um, low profile unlike the Yak Terminator 3 where they sat right up in the air these are really low profile sights and the closer you get your eye to the sight in plane the more accurate you're going to be as a fact if you've got a scope which is really high up air rifle shooters will know this room fire shooters will now a clue what I'm talking about probably because they aim flat at every trajectory apart from over a thousand yards which is for an air rifle is probably the same as shooting at a hundred yards so if you can shoot an air rifle anybody can shoot a firearm so same with these if you can get your trajectories right with a crossbow you can go straight up tomorrow and shoot a 50 cal as if he was using a water pistol it's that easy for these